Hi, I'm John Storms, and uh, today uh, I'm going to be talking about power supplies. Um, did a quick video a long time ago on power supplies when I was brand new to the hobby, and uh, we know a little bit more now. So, uh, still not an electrician, just an amateur, but I've played with a bunch of power supplies. So, what I have here is I have what are probably some of the more common ones. This one is your... Um, you know, uh, this is a power supply from a server, right? And these are popular with people because the output on these are really, really high, okay? And when you look at the label for a power supply, it's really important, right? You want to look at the input, right? And this inputs between 100 and 240 volts, 50 to 60 hertz, and it gives, you know, amperage. And then it talks about output, okay? Now this bad boy can generate almost 90 amps of power, okay? So I have a bunch of these. I don't actually put them out in my show. I'm very tempted to do so, but they put out a lot of power. Um, and typically you'll get uh, a breakout board for the back so you can screw things down. I've done it uh, before. You have to jumper one of the pins um so that because power supply doesn't run unless there's a load but anyway this is out there i mentioned it so you know about it but um you want to do a little bit more homework before you use it so we're just going to move this one off to the side we're not going to worry about that okay um this power supply is probably you know very close to the most common power supply you'll see out there you'll find these on sale uh, this is a 12 volt 29.1. So you want to find the sticker. Okay. Again, the input and output is important. So this one is inputs between 100 and 120 volts. Okay. At six amps at 50 to 60 Hertz. And then the output is 12 volts, 21, 29.1 amps. Okay. That is the maximum you can output. If you output more than that, it will get hot. And then it will start fires. Okay. So you want to make sure you're not overloading that. Okay. Um, and then of course, here are all the terminals and you want to be careful when this is plugged in, this is actually pretty dangerous. Okay. But you come down here and you look at these, this label and here is the input to the power supply, right? This is where the AC connects and this is L N and ground right? So this is line, this is neutral, this is ground. And you want to hook this up correctly. Now I'm not an electrician and to help me remember, I actually put the color of the wires up here, green, white, black, right? If you don't know this by heart, you know, give yourself some clues. I mean, even if you do know it by heart, it doesn't hurt just because it's that important. And then over here, these terminals are your output terminals. These, this is AC in, DC out. So this is V minus, this is V plus, okay? Because DC always has plus and minus. And so these are screw down connectors. And I like the ones that come with a little plastic guard. After everything's screwed down, you click the plastic guard in place and it's nice and safe. Now, the other thing to look for is this little screw. Every power supply, and I don't know about the data center ones, but these power supplies have a little screw and you just twist that a little bit one way or the other and it will adjust the output. So it's supposed to be 12 volts, but it's never quite exactly 12 volts. And there are times when you want a little bit less. There's times when you want a little bit more. Some pixels don't like to drive exactly at 12 volts. They like being a little bit under and it can vary by year. Some pixels like to be a little overpowered. Sometimes you might have a really long way to go and you have some voltage drop along the way. You might want it to be a little higher. So depending on the circumstance, you may want to move it up and down. And you just use a little tiny Phillips screwdriver. But you want to have the power supply on when you're playing with it so you can see the numbers because they change. It's really, really sensitive. And we'll show you how to do that. Okay. Another common power supply is an outdoor rated power supply. Now, they say they're outdoor rated, but you know, those holes are kind of big. I think water can get in there. So obviously, it's meant to be pointing up this way but even this top thing is not going to be waterproof for very long um and on this one this one happens to come with a cord now usually most power you know most enclosures i put this in i have to cut it off and then put another power cord on it anyway just because the hole's not big enough and i don't want to put a big massive hole in my enclosure um 
And then down here is the output. Now again, here we have the label, right? Label is really important. So for this one, it says, you know, the outputs are red is 12 volt positive, 12 volt negative. Its output is DC 12 volt, 33 amps, 400 watts. If, if you have amps, watts, and voltage, you can figure out the others. It's a, it's a simple formula. But I like to look at the amps. Okay, so this one has 33 amps. You remember this one had 29.1. So this one's bigger, but it can also drive, you know, more pixels or more stuff. And when you buy your pixels, um, often the manufacturer will tell you the how much the pixels are rated for, how much amperage each pixel will use. And then you just simply add them up. I like to give myself about a... 18 to 20 percent buffer meaning i don't use all the amperage that way i make sure i'm under i try to over engineer the safety side because i don't want to burn my house down now my favorite power supply and the power supply that i would recommend is this one this is a meanwell brand power supply arguably the best one that uh, we can come close to affording and this one is the LRS 35012, okay? And this one, if it finds that it's being, and I, I think I probably bought this one from Holiday Lighting. Uh, they do, they tend to do a sale. Uh, I think this is Chris Ward's place. But, and again, here is the, the label, right? Where you, you want to look at the inputs, you want to look at the outputs. This one is 12 volts, outputs at 12 volts, 29 amps. Okay, um, and that's important because I don't want to overload it. Now, this power supply, the reason why it's great, first of all, is a little slimmer form factor. So this one and this one in terms of performance are about the same. And look, this one is way thinner. Okay. Um, oddly enough, this one does not come with the plastic cover, but it does have the little holes for it. So you can buy those afterwards and stick them on there. But this power supply, if it notices that it's being overloaded, will shut itself down temporarily. And then it will come back and say, am I okay now? Nope, go back down. Um, and it really makes for a much safer power supply. So anything that goes on the house, on my house, if there's a power supply that's against the wall of my house or underneath an eave or anything like that, I use the Meanwell power supplies. Now, these are 12 volts. All my pixels are 12 volts. These same power supplies also come in 5 volts. You can get them in 24 volts. You can get them at, and then you can get them at different amperages. I got one around the corner here that is a uh, 20 amp because, you know, I'm it's for something smaller. But typically, you'll find that your power supplies are 12 volts and around 30 amps. Okay, so those are the different kinds of power supplies. Now we're going to move these guys out of the way. We're going to talk about how to hook them up. So my screwdrivers are here. There's these. Okay. So these do not come with 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 AC cords. Okay. Now a lot of vendors will sell the cords, but if you know where to look, you can get cords now. If you're looking for a cord, I like big chunky cords to use with my power supplies. Right? I like to over-engineer everything. So here I got these nice thick wires. I find that vacuum cleaners work really good, right? So if your wife's vacuum cleaner breaks or happens to broke because you were using it, then that's a really good um, that's a really good one. Uh, another good one is power strips. Uh, at work, they decided to get rid of all the power strips, replace them with new ones. And, you know, I pulled them out of the trash and I chopped off the uh, the uh, the cables because the, the cord is just fine. Um, and you really, it's not so thick how thick this cord is. It's really how thick these wires are. And obviously, the thicker these are, the thicker this is. But you want these to be fairly thick. Now, a lot of people like to put them in just like this. Right. Um, and that's okay. Um, I, I kind of like putting the spades on. Some people say you don't get a good a connection. And there's times where you definitely don't want to use spades. But I like them just because it's easier to screw down. The other thing I worry about, especially as my eyesight goes, is when you are screwing these down into the power supply, you really don't want them to fray 
and make a connection with another terminal. That's obviously really bad. So I do, for this case, I like using spades, all right? So what I do is I get the spades, run the wire through, and then I got this special tool. It's called a special tool. Um, I don't know, it, it's at Home Depot, uh, you know, or Lowe's, wherever you find the spades, this tool is right nearby. You see how it has the little blue thing? The blue, red, blue, yellows for the different gauge wires. I'm dealing with 12 to 10, but the 12 to 10 spades don't fit on the power supply. So I use the blue ones and they seem to do just fine. I'm sure somebody will comment on the video that I'm going to burn my house down. And then you just give it a crimp, give it a nice squeeze. I used to be a little bit more paranoid about this and I would give it a little drop of solder there. Uh, but I don't do that anymore. It seemed to be a little bit, just it didn't seem to make any difference. So now I do the green one, which is ground. And we'll give this guy a squeeze. And then we'll do this one. We'll give this a... I like to see the copper come out the other side. Alan Dow showed me all of this stuff. I really appreciate it years and years ago. And, you know, his point was always, you know, it's about metal to metal contact. So I make sure that I get a really good squeeze in there that these guys aren't coming out. See, now, no matter what, you don't want to trust anything, right? Uh, because it's going on your house. Now on your multimeter, they almost always have a continuity check, right? And on mine, the continuity check is right here. And then what you do, is you can come up and you can say ground on, touch ground on one of the pins, like this, and then you come over here and then you find ground. And you make sure you have continuity, okay? And you do the same thing for the other two lines. And I usually like to go around all three just to make sure only one gets connect, has a connection through the wire. If two have a connection through the wire, then there's a you know a short somewhere, and that's really really bad. See, only one. And I'll do ground again because I forgot to check all the wires. And ground is really important not to short out. See, just the ground. Okay, so I got continuity through this. That's good. We'll come back and play with multimeter again in a little bit. Multimeters are a lot of fun. All right, so now we're going to hook up the inputs. So I got my power supply. I got this, and I'm going to try to do this one-handed. Okay, so you come over here to the inputs. Ground, neutral, line. So ground, which is green, goes in here. So I slip it underneath the terminal there, and then I screw it down. It's just a regular Phillips head screwdriver. Okay, next I have neutral, which is the white wire, and I slide it under that terminal, okay, and we screw it down. And finally we have the black wire. See, I want to get it all the way up there. And the spades just make me feel like I get a good connection. But you know, to be perfectly honest, you probably actually get a better connection with the bare wire. I just like making sure I don't have any crosses, right? I don't have any frayed wire going from one to the other. And my eyesight isn't the best. So that's actually important. So now it's all hooked up, I can actually plug it in. Now after I plug this in, I have to be careful. Here. This part I forgot I was going to do, so let me get a power strip. I've got a really beefy power strip here. And this is a surge protector, and you can tell something's a surge protector if it advertises clamping speed. So I'm going to power it on, and hopefully nothing sparks. Okay, nothing sparks. Getting a green light, which you can't see. Now you can see. Okay, so there's a green light right there. Now, if I take my meter, I'm going to set it to right here, 20 volts. 
okay 20 volts dc and so we're gonna we're gonna measure how many volts this is putting out and this is a 12 volt power supply so i'm expecting it to be 12 volts red goes on positive black goes on negative if you get it messed up it doesn't hurt anything it just comes up with the wrong sign it'll be positive and negative backwards so this one's on positive actually can i squeeze that guy under sure would be handy since i'm videotaping nope okay you just gotta touch it see and when I touch it, you see what it did there? It's saying 12.13. That's a little higher than I want. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust that screw. <clears throat> and again, it would be very unlike me to be prepared and find out in advance. The screwdriver in there. And you want a little screwdriver, not a big one. There's my little screwdriver. <clears throat> and there's this little plastic nubby. And it goes both ways. So you just barely touch it. And it's going to move. This is a place where it's handy to have three hands. Okay. So I turn it. And it's going down. 12.15. Oh, too much. Now it's on below 12. 11.97. Just a smidge. Very small moves. 11.97. 12.05. I actually like it slightly over 12. 12.05, 12.06. Seems to be a good number for me, right? It will vary. If you are having problems with your lights, this is something um, you might want to play with to see if this is one of your... Sometimes you got it on too high. Sometimes you have it too low. And different years, we've seen different things with different lights. So anyway, I'm going to power this down. Not only am I going to turn off the power strip, I'm going to unplug it. I really don't like getting shocked. It's not my favorite thing. Okay, so now that's the input. Now let's look at the output side. So here we have black wire and red wire. I don't know if you know this, there's literally no physical differences between a red wire and a black wire. And you can use any color wire you want, but don't. Use black, go and buy black wire for V minus and red wire for V plus because you don't want to confuse yourself. You know, you might, while you have this on a bench like this, you're like, oh, John, I know what I'm doing. You know, I can, I can handle it. But when it's out in your yard and it's dark and there's a crowd full of people and you're stressed out, you're going to make a mistake. Okay. So make sure you use, you know, green for ground. I mean, for AC, you're using the right colors for the right thing. And for DC, you're using black for V minus and red for V plus. All right, so here I'm going to put a spade on this just because I like spades going into my power supplies. Now, the other thing I do with my power supplies is when I get them, I write down who I got them from. In this case, they put a sticker on it. And I also write down when I got it. Right. So if for whatever reason somebody were to say, hey, we got a bad batch of power supplies and they're like sold by this vendor in this range, I can actually figure it out. The other button on here that you want to know about is this one, the one that the big yellow sticker is pointing to. See this? This allows you to switch between basically 110 and 220. And you want to check that before you put it in. I've actually had power supplies come with this preset to 220. And when I put it on the house, I was getting this weird flickering effect, right? It would just flicker on every so often. Now, having, you know, it's not going to damage the, the the power supply, but it didn't work right. And I got up there, it was on the roof, and all it was was that. But I had to pull the power supply out to reach the little switch. I flicked it to 110, everything was fine. Okay, so I got the spade put on my V minus. So I get my power supply up here. This is V plus, this is V minus. So I loosen that up. And it doesn't matter which V minus, you got three V minus terminals. I slide it in there and I screw it on. And I really avoid touching the terminals even when it's not powered on just because I'm a really paranoid guy. See, just like that.
Now, I like to use for the V+, Plus, especially when I'm sending it to a controller or anything I paid money for, I like having a fused V plus input. And when you buy them, they come on a, a little loop and you just cut the loop, right? And then you stick a, a fuse in there. And these are just, you know, like the fuses you get for, for your car, right? And you just put it in. This one happens to be a 30 amp fuse, which is probably way too big for this. Um, 15 amp fuse would probably do you fine. Anyway, people know better than me. <coughs> But that way, if you do get a surge, even from one of the mean wells, which is never perfect, right? The fuse will help protect your equipment to a degree, okay? Now, on this end, come on, focus. See, on this end, I tinned the tip. That means I took solder and I made this a solid connection, okay? This is actually a bad idea. You never want to do this, okay? Because if you're running it directly into the power supply, even if it's bare wire, it's going to have a better grip. When you run the other end into a controller, you're running it into these Phoenix connectors, you know, where you screw or you're screwing them down. And what's happening inside is there's actually little, I'm trying to get my angle right here. There's little teeth that are coming together like this and your wire is running in between and it comes together like this and it crunches it and holds it in place and if that's bare wire the wire will meld around that pretty well if it's hard like it's been tinned these teeth will tend to bow out and then it will slip out easier so if you want the good firm connection which you really really do trust me loose connection will lead to sparking lead to fires lead to screaming in the middle of the night you don't want that okay but the loose wire will go right through there very, very nicely, okay? And you want that. Um, the size of wire is also important. If your wire coming from your power supply to your controller or to your power injection board or your power distribution board is too thin, it's going to heat up, okay? And what I've noticed is it tends to heat up right here. And this thing gets black and then it melts and then it catches fire and then comes the, the screaming and the running in the middle of the night, okay? So again, use bare wire going into Phoenix connectors. Same goes for the pixels, right? So you are very familiar with these four port Phoenix connectors of which we use three. Don't use tin tips, use straight wire, okay? And then it just screws down, nice firm connection, and you won't have to worry about it. Works a lot better. Okay, <clears throat> now, since this one has a tin tip, right? Because I, you know, I learned stuff as I go. And I tinned this one because I thought it would help. And it, I actually did the wrong thing. Just snip that off. You got to have a decent pair of wire cutters. Now, this is 12 gauge wire. So I have, see the little 12 here. You just go in there. Give yourself about a half a fingernail's worth. Give it a little twisty twisty. And then this guy pulls her off. See that? Very nice. And since this side already has a spade, this is going to be my controller side. Now, what I do do to keep them from fraying is I give them, you know, a twist or two so they kind of stick together. This end is going to go into the V plus side, right? So run it into here. These three on the end are V plus. I recommend you hold this on the table and not do it with one hand, though. Okay, make sure that connection is nice and secure. So yeah, very nice. Now, if I turn on the controller, first of all, if I turn on the controller, I want to make sure these two wires don't touch. Okay, that's another way to start a fire. Also want to make sure the wire doesn't touch the, um, the metal pole of the uh, tripod. That wouldn't be good either. So I plug this back in, then I turn it on. Okay. So it's powering up. So I get out my handy dandy multimeter. I switch it to 20 volts DC. I put it here. I very carefully take the leads. This one, we touch to ground. I do not like doing this one on the video. This is, does not feel safe. Okay, touch touch 
See, and I'm getting my 12 volts, 12.04 or 12.03. So very close to what I had. Turn this off, turn this off. All right, see, but it's still going. See, I still got a green light. Gotta wait for that guy to go out. <clears throat> we unplug this to boot. Okay, now we can start moving to the next one. So we're gonna hook this up to the controller. Now, mo this is a Falcon F16 V3 controller, okay? It's made by David Pitts, it's a great controller. Culp's are great controllers, a lot of good controllers out there, okay? You all are very fortunate, live in a time of great controllers. Power comes in to this board three different ways. Three different ways. So, this is V2, this is V1. How do you know that? Because they mark it on the board, right? So what I do is I come in and I do this. I loosen up these screws. The power for the board comes through V2, okay? Or it can come through here, okay? Now here, I believe you can use five volt or 12 volt, but you never believe anybody on a video. You go to the manufacturer's website, get the manual and read the manual about how to hook up power, okay? Even if you've seen this a bunch of times, still go look. Up here, also important, this little switch, this side says the board is gonna be five volt. This side says it's gonna be seven to 13 volts, okay? I'm using 12 volts, I want it to be on this side. So this little switch, make sure it's that way. Used to be a jumper. I like the jumper because I never accidentally bump a jumper to a different setting. I have this down to V2 because I like powering the board this way. Because, you know, you're going to pro provide power to the pixels anyway. You can also power the board. The board itself takes about 2 amps. Okay. So, when you connect the board to the power supply. Ugh, kneeling down. Remember, I said you want the bare wire. Now, this wire is too long. Because you don't, when I put this in the connector, look what's going to happen. It's going to stick out. See, there's a little bit there sticking out. That's bad because if for whatever reason, there's another wire for anything and it happens to cross that, it's going to ground out. So I'm just going to trim this. See that it has a little trimmer on the in, in the inside. It's going to trim this down. Again, it's about a half a fingernail length. If you have fingernails that are about my, my length. See, but you play with it. And basically the goal is get it in there. Nothing else showing. All right. Balls deep. And then you tighten it up. I think this is a scrap, crappy screwdriver. There it goes. Okay, now that's tight. Over here, I take this. This end is a little on the short side, but I think it's it's adequate. That's what she said. All right, and then we screw that down. Okay. Always, always, always make sure that ground is going in the right side and V plus is going in the right side. Because on this one, ground is on the outside, the V plus is on the inside. And this one is exactly the same, mirrored. Ground is on the outside, V one is on the inside, okay? Now, if you are fully loading these boards, typically the way it works is this side powers this half of the board. This side powers that half of the board. You do not want to overload the pixels. If you put a thousand pixels on every single port, this is not gonna be enough power, okay? You're gonna to have to do power injection. That's a whole different video, but it uses the same power supply, okay? So now, theoretically, we should be able to power the board on. I pulled this out of my broken batch. Oh, perfect. It powers on. Uh, the OLED comes up, but I can't ping it. The uh, uh, Ethernet's bad. I got struck by lightning, so I got a lot of a lot of bad boards. The other thing is, you saw me cut some copper here. You want to keep that stuff cleaned up really good. You don't want that just waltzing around your workspace. It's nothing like a stray copper bit. All right, so we plug this guy in. We power it up. Here it comes. See, I only connected power on this side and 
see that the fuse light the v3 is the one they started having fuse lights these light up this isn't powered because i haven't hooked it up so if i wanted to hook this side up what do i do i can just run it from here over to here now if i was planning a lot of pixels and drawing a lot of power i could actually have another power supply power this side okay now so now that this is powered up let's do this get the multimeter out let's go measure the the voltage and i got this set for up to 20 amps all right so i come over to here and this is really good troubleshooting by the way so let's say something's not right you come over and you measure you you measure your voltage at the power supply okay and we see that it's 12 volts i don't know if you can see that maybe here is better Careful sliding things around, John. You're going to hurt yourself. Okay. So we come up to here right off the power supply. It is 12.03. Okay. Now, if I come over to here, I'm probably going to block it. I can go to the terminal and I can see I'm at 12.02. Okay. Now I can even go to the pixel ports. Okay. You see this pin here? Probably not in the video, but it's marked V. So I put my red here. Ground is on the end. And I hook these two guys together. I don't see anything. All right, good. Here we go. This one's 12.02. And this one is 12.02. Oh, and I know why this one isn't showing anything. It's because, no, this is 12.02. And I go to this guy. And he is zero. Why is he zero? Because he's powered by V1. Okay, again, refer to the manufacturer's documentation from the controller so you know which inputs to the board control what stuff. Okay, now if you're in a situation, let's say you have a box where you have a lot of power going through and you need multiple power supplies, like you're going to have one here and one here. If you have a fully loaded system, like I'm building, let me go get the board. This is a Falcon F16 V4, okay? Now here, it's the same basic architecture, right? You got your input power, you have your output ports, you have your fuses. These are fuses between the controller and the pixels. And I could, if ideally, if you wanted to max this out, it would be six power supplies, one, two, and then you have extension boards, right? You see these two ribbon connectors, one goes here, one goes here. And so, three, four, five, six. This controller could have six power supplies in it. You gotta make sure they get air, they get cooled. But the point is, don't overload them. My very first board was the sand devices. I had 13 trees running 125 pixels each. And I think I used 14 gauge or 16 gauge wire. And those things got hot. The wires would actually get warm. And that's bad. Typically, the pixels coming off of your board are gonna, you're gonna use 18 gauge wire. Okay, but going to the board, I like 12, 12 gauge. Um, I tried 10. 10 is just too thick, right? It's just hard to get into the terminals. I would actually have to take the ends, fray them, put them on both sides to get them to fit. And they don't like to fit in here. So 10 is too much. 12 is really the, bit, the, the biggest that will fit. And then 14 is probably okay. But, you know, measure it, right? You know, check your wires. Do they get warm? Also, make sure you're not overloading the board, that you're not overloading the power supply. You know, the board itself takes about two amps, and then the pixel manufacturers, you can figure out from uh, usually their websites, or if you can't do that, go online. John Spiker has a great spreadsheet. You can figure out the load of the pixels per pixel and make sure that you're not overloading. Also, each of these outputs on the board, these are five amp fuses. So you also want to make sure that each port is not pushing more than five amps of power or else you could blow one of these fuses. Obviously, it takes a little bit more than five amps to blow a five amp fuse, but, you know, it's a good rule of thumb. You don't want to do more than five amps off of a port. Now, you can do power injection where you inject into the strings. Like I said before, that's another video. Another really important thing under... No matter what you do, if you have multiple power supplies, you never want 
V plus to be tied together. Okay, ground can be tied together. That's fine um, under some some conditions, but V plus you definitely want to avoid ever tying these together. On inputs, you also don't want to take the ground and connect it to V minus. That's a bad idea. I had a vendor who used to send me controllers and power supplies where that was pre-wired that way. I've since learned that that's a bad idea. Okay, so don't don't do that. All right, let's see. Anything else to say about the power supplies? We talked about the switch on the side. We talked about the adjustment. Um, I think that's it. Talked about getting the nice chunky wires, fused in fused inputs. You have the fused outputs. I like having the fused inputs. Not everybody does this. The other thing I'll say is I see a lot of controllers, power injection boxes where people like to put a lot of accessories, right? They'll put in LED lighting to make it look all jazzed up. They'll put in a, a voltage meter. The voltage meter, once you've read it, it's gonna stay the same to what it is, okay? I've actually had some of those components before burn up on me. So these days, I tend to stick with exactly what I need, nothing else. Anything you put in there can potentially go wrong, so why put in stuff you don't need, okay? Um, power supplies, let me turn this off. Disconnect it. I'm gonna unplug it. So now it's safe to unscrew all these guys okay on the back they tend to have and this one I have some a bracket on but they tend to have four holes okay um, and what you'll do is you get a backer board similar to this right and then you can drill holes through it run the screws through and it keeps it nice and secure. I used to just because it was simple and I was having trouble figuring it out, I would actually Velcro the boards um, to the, the backer plates. And that works too. Um, you just want to be really careful not to block any of the vents, right? All the, there's not a lot of vents and it needs all of them. So if you block the vents, you're going you're gonna to have problems because these obviously are converting AC to DC. They generate heat. Okay, so that is it for wiring up a power supply.